I skip uh, Representative McWilliams for support of not speaking. And Scott Spratlin, opposed to speaking. Good morning, Senators. For the record, my name is Scott Spradling. I'm representing the New Hampshire Association of Broadcasters. I just wanted to give you a couple of thoughts. Some that might be reasoning why we have concerns about the bill, but some might also just be educational pragmatically, given that there are other states having these conversations, a lot of moving parts. I think that's where I'd like to start, just very briefly. Um, we obviously, as state associations, work for the National Association of Broadcasters that from a big picture, coast to coast perspective, have concerns about the step-by-step, uh, -step, go it alone, individual state or clusters of state approaches to something like this. Um, but let me give you a quick rundown based on what we were able to gather in the last few days about what's going on in other states, which is relevant to your decision process. So for example, in Maine, considering this bill is contingent on Maine and Massachusetts, a committee in Maine has already killed the bill that would essentially take the action to move to Atlantic time zone. They have another one that they are turning into a re uh, resolution that would ask Congress to address the issue. You heard from one of the reps that basically talks about the federal oversight and the need to essentially get a stamp of approval. They're moving in that direction. They're not taking action. So pragmatically, that has a pretty significant impact on this conversation. In Massachusetts, the bill that was referred to a committee in January. There has been no action. And uh, the Massachusetts Broadcasters Association looked into why it hasn't moved. And what they were told by some of the lawmakers is there's no support for it. So it's sitting dormant. Anything could change, they're in session. I make no predictions, but at least at the moment, the reason it's dormant is because the votes aren't there. In Vermont, where you heard before there a bill has been filed, the prime sponsor of that bill has already said publicly he knows it's gonna take years to educate the state of Vermont and move forward. You've heard their process is slightly different, but he's already admitted the votes are not there for passage. Connecticut is trying to link together with Mass and Rhode Island, and they're thinking about amending it to include New York. <coughs> Rhode Island is looking at a bill that would change if Connecticut and Massachusetts do it, and New York has only established a task force. I raise this because this is a follow, a, a follow the bouncing ball kind of a conversation, and there is no real coherent regional strategy, which is the greatest concern that we have as broadcasters for considering a change like this. In terms of impact, if you already know that the bills require federal approval, uh, what the NHAB would say to all of you is that we take no position on the idea itself, the argument about impact on schools, impact on crime, impact on energy. Those are decisions that we defer to you on, but we're concerned about how this is being implemented and the idea that we're doing this in maybe small clusters of states. Our businesses rely on what we describe as the clock hour. Businesses in radio and television broadcasting make money based on audience share in a particular hour. What's complicated about this bill, this approach, and what's happening in New Hampshire is that many of, many of our member stations own stations in neighboring states and also broadcast across state lines to populations that they are able to measure and use as a part of their market share in order to set rates, in order to make money, in order to pay the bills. The idea that perhaps our state changes with a couple but not everyone creates an administrative and a programming nightmare from the perspective of the broadcasters. Also, and you kind of heard it before, your Super Bowl question. Um, I, I don't have as, maybe as good a, as an example, but if we're talking about not falling back, and we're staying put and the rest of the country falls back, but we stay an hour ahead for November, for December, for January, maybe the easiest way to think about it is, at least in November and December, if the Patriots are playing on Monday Night Football, they're gonna be playing an hour later on our television screens than they are for the rest of the East Coast. And I have a feeling that Patriots fans who like to try to get to sleep at a decent hour are not going to be thrilled about always having to watch their team into the fourth quarter at 1 a.m. That's a practical, subjective, but very real impact that will happen if we do this three-state or even go-it-alone strategy. You're going to create confusion. You're going to upset viewers who don't understand why this is happening. And from the perspective of commerce from businesses, especially along Vermont border, but potentially along Maine and uh, the Massachusetts borders of New Hampshire, you're creating some, some real pragmatic and administrative nightmares. So our perspective is we're opposed to this bill as it is pitched, and our recommendation at Friendly would be to perhaps um, find a pathway to unite all of the states, perhaps the eastern seaboard. Florida's talking about it. Other states up and down the east coast are at least having this conversation. It might be best held as a resolution or a recommendation to Congress to figure this out and see whether or not this can be handled from a 50-state strategy. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's all I have signed up. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? My name is Garrett Ian. I'm from Concord, New Hampshire, and I'm speaking in favor of the bill. Um, I think this bill creates a wonderful opportunity for uh, Massachusetts, Maine, and New Hampshire to join together on something that does unite us all, it does frustrate us all, this change of the clocks. Um, this is something that takes something that is unnecessary compli unnecessarily complicated and makes it simpler. The fact that it's going to be a resolution of these states which experience the uh, Maine being on the easternmost tip of the United States, they experience the daylight um, earliest, even though they are so far north. Um, as far as involving Vermont in the bill, if Vermont wants to get involved, that's great. But a reason why it's less relevant to necessarily involve Vermont is um, being further west, they're experiencing the daylight later. So uh, there is less of a direct impact than there is on New Hampshire, Maine, and Massachusetts, where if you see they're more geographically aligned than Vermont, which is north. Uh, west of the primary portion of that geography. Um, one thing that was mentioned about uh, other states uh, not moving forward on this, Maine's, uh, Maine's bill was tabled because it did only involve Maine. It was not a, a compact with the other states. Um, the one in Massachusetts, which it was mentioned, like hasn't gotten traction yet. I mean, it doesn't mean the bill's dead, but um, Massachusetts, there was a lot of talk about the Patriots. Massachusetts is where I imagine there's way more Patriots uh, consumers than in New Hampshire, uh, in the sense that that's where they play, that's where there's a larger population base. Um, if Massachusetts shifted, I imagine that businesses operating in Massachusetts may consider changing their, uh, their start times to align with that. Um, as it was mentioned, we'd still be aligned with New York's time for most of the year. Um, but Boston is definitely our major metropolitan hub. Um, tried to do some traveling recently, and I realized that you need to go to Boston to pretty much travel anywhere else in Portland, Maine, or, or Vermont, um, because it is such a hub. And that is the reason why, yes, involving Massachusetts would be an important aspect um, of this bill. They are our major po uh, metropolitan area that's closest to here. Um, this would only, another thing that I was kind of concerned about when the opposition spoke about the health aspects, they were, they never like touched on it other than to say it was specious to say that there's health issues confined to this. Um, or that, oh, well, people are only looking at the data of the time in which we change the daylight savings time. Well, yes, that data is statistically significant. There is a measurable increase, especially in sleep disorders, and to a lesser extent, like heart attacks and car crashes. And uh, as somebody who has frustrations with when the clocks change, both ways, one way or the other, um, I, I don't like being told that like, that argument is specious because it's something that affects me and affects lots of people. And I'd love to see us join with other portions of the, the state. Um, this is a very divisive time in, in national politics. I don't think there should be an expectation that much should be or could be accomplished at the national level right now, which is why I think this would be a great time for states to join together and form these very peaceful and very productive resolutions to, uh, to unify this portion of, of the, uh, the United States. And I thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Senator Rosenbaum. I do have one. Thank you. Um, I asked my husband, who's a board-certified cardiologist, about the increase in heart attacks. And what he said when he reviewed the literature is, they go up on Monday, but they go down on Tuesday. And if you look at the week of daylight savings, there's no difference. Are you familiar with the primary studies? Did you know that? I am not a doctor, so I have not read like actual medical journals that have uh, researched this, but I have read a variety of articles, and it's something that's been of interest to me over the year. And The majority of the articles that cite evidence that I've seen have indicated that there is a statistically significant increase around the times, I should, I should reword that, immediately following the times that daylight savings time is incorporated. Um, more so in the time when, I, I may be mixing them up, more so in the time when it's, it's turned back when people are losing that hour versus when they're gaining the hour, so to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Seeing none, thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to House Bill 410? Oh, I'm sorry. 567. Seeing none, I'd like to close public hearing House Bill 567.